uh, dear Elizabeth and David, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me to speak. I would like to speak about the main challenges, the main threats, and the main problems that emerge when we um, uh, try to combat uh, cancer spread. If we speak about the could we go back to the beginning? So, dear colleagues, the, uh, well, of course, we uh, uh, associate the decrease with the uh, um, lower rate of mortality uh, due to the uh, lower uh, share of tumors that are not treatable. Uh, of course, due to the standardization, the use of the new methods of treatment. And this is what is being very often discussed in the context of oncology. If we take the components uh, uh, that lead to the decrease of mortality, then of course uh, we need to speak about the main risk factors, setting out the risk groups, which makes it possible to carry out all the preventive measures and reduce the mortality rate. And also screening, screening of healthy population in order to detect pre-cancer um, oncological um, um, uh, defects at the early stage, uh, which might uh, uh, raise the level of um, uh, mobility and might lead to mortality. Now, the uh, detection, the early diagnostics, is something that is very often discussed these days. And of course, all the specialists, and not only oncologists, have to be very careful and very attentive when there are complaints. This makes it possible to have the early diagnostics, and this leads to the higher level of morbidity, but in the long run, to the lower rate of death um, from cancer. And uh, quite often, uh, they uh, talk about standardization of treatment in the context of acknowledging improvement of diagnostics and the state-of-the-art methods of treatment that uh, decrease the mortality rate and increase the life expectancy and the quality life of the cancer patients. If we take the socially significant um, uh, uh, cancers uh, that are really threatening for our society, then for men, for men, it's uh, uh, lung cancer, uh, uh, colorectal, uh, prostate uh, cancer, stomach uh, cancer. And we can see that the trend over the past 25 years was uh, going down. Down. Uh, that's uh, true for uh, cancer length. This is true lung cancer, sorry. This is also true for women. And this is explained by the society uh, measures taken all over. Um, um, lower level of smoking, uh, the, the, the uh, mortality uh, from uh, stomach cancer is also at a lower level because the diets are better. Uh, there are um, uh, the Halactobacter pylori uh, is not that widely spread, and uh, so um, alcoholism um, 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 is at a lower level. As for the prostate. Uh, um, uh, cancer. Uh, here we can speak about high level of mortality. If we uh, examine the epidemiological situation, we will see that in different entities, this curve is different, different entities of the Federation. And this is very often associated with screening. Uh, colorectal um, uh, cancer, as you can see, the population increases. But as for the mortality, mortality seems to be on the flat level. But in different entities of the Federation, mortality rates are different. In St. Petersburg, it goes down, most probably because because of the success in treatment and diagnostics, because there are sufficient resources. Well, in some of the entities of Northwest Russia, mortality over the past 10 years from colorectal uh, uh, cancer has been growing. As for uh, women, then um, of importance here, of course, the breast cancer. And over the past uh, 25 years, and I will speak about that uh, the incidence has been growing, but the mortality rate has been going down. If we take risks and the risk factors leading to breast cancer, but then we you can see that the risk factors are still there, overweight, obesity. And uh, uh, the um, decrease of mortality is, first of all, associated in our community with the success of treatment. Because the second component here 
mm, is screening and the, uh, pop, pop, uh, there is no screening for breast cancer and the success of this specialization is uh, sort of uh, doubtful. Anyway, there is not a single study uh, initiated uh, 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 to examine the effect of the dispensarization, the effect on the uh, lowering of uh, cancer spread. Uh, colorectal, again, there is a growth in certain entities. Mortality goes down in some of the entities of the federation. The same is true for um, uh, stomach uh, cancers, for lung uh, cancer. As you can see, both uh, morbidity and mortality are lower than for men. But if you take the situation, is more or less uh, level. But if we look at different age groups, then we will see the situation is not quite like that. It looks different in different uh, regions. It's one story when we take about, take the big cities, which are similar to large European uh, cities and the American cities. And it's a different story if we talk about provinces. And of course, uh, the um, uh, the uh, the, the uh, cervical uh, cancer and other types of cancers as, uh, associated with the uh, human papilloma virus, and uh, this uh, trend um, is particularly typical of large cities. And I will later speak about the uh, specifics of different groups. And as for alcohol and uh, its impact on our population, and he's quite recently said that spoke about the role of alcohol in the mortality rate. And David Georgievich, in his studies, in his research, demonstrates that a lot depends on the dose of alcohol in different groups of the population. Mortality depends on that very much. And of course, the oncological disease is um, a part of that um, overall problem. So it seems that um, nowadays we can see some positive changes in the anti-alcohol campaign. As for smoking, here is the data of WHO. And the survey is carried out in uh, Russia in different uh, uh, populations and different groups of the population. The number of smokers goes down among men, among women, among the younger population, but still there is quite a lot of them as compared to other countries. If we take uh, mortality from uh, lung cancer for men and women uh, in Russia and in the United States, you will see that there is positive dynamics. We can see it uh, right away, but still the highest indicator uh, uh, index uh, is in uh, Russia for men, lower for men in the United States. And look at the graphs down there. Women um, um, uh, in the United States, higher uh, mortality rate. It goes down much uh, lower here in Russia, but there is no decrease. And if we look different age groups, uh, then uh, this is a study of ours carried out on the basis of the data of this uh, St. Petersburg population cancer rate. We analyzed the situation with mobility um, in different age groups, and uh, you can see here that uh, the uh, dynamics with men and women um, with uh, morbidity is different in different age groups. While with men, it goes down in different groups because men are more active um, um, uh, trying to stop smoking. Well, it's a very different story with women. Um, and, um, within the past several years, um, with younger women, this has been growing. This is dynamics um, for uh, stomach cancer, different age groups and we can see there is a um, uh, uh, downtrend and uh, uh, Alexei Barchuk carried out uh, this particular study we examined the dynamics in the Russian pop population um, um, breast cancer and cervical cancer and you can see these two graphs uh, um, incidence and uh, uh, mortality uh, on the right hand side cervical cancer you can see over the past 25 years the level of uh, um, uh, morbidity has been growing but starting with the beginning of this century the death rate has been going down. The dynamics is about 1-2% per year. As for the cervical cancer, uh, again, the uh, incidence has been growing. Um, uh, uh, there is a significant growth uh, since the beginning of the century, particularly in the big cities. And uh, um, uh, it's uh, uh, the, the disease of the present day, and this is a true challenge for our society. As for mortality rate, well, before the 1990s, there was um, uh, uh, 
um, uh, a downflow uh, trend. Uh, uh, yes, a lot was being done in those days in Russia to combat that. But we can see a growth now in all the population. But if we take different age groups and uh, um, the, the data of the uh, St. Petersburg Cancer Register, and we looked at different age groups, here is what we can see. Uh, that, that was the data for the whole population. And if we have the different uh, age groups, you can see the dynamics of growth of um, incidence among young women. And as for women and uh, over uh, 60, uh, 65, um, um, it's on a, 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 a way down. So if we look at the data of the register, we look at the mortality from uh, uh, cervical cancer. We can see these dynamics um, um, from different uh, cancers with young women um, under 45 uh, is on the downflow, but the red uh, um, line is the mortality from cervical cancer. And uh, after 2015, the share of uh, the um, uh, died among young women is even higher than uh, the share of young women in the group of those who die from breast cancer. And if we uh, compare Russia to other countries, and to, on the left-hand side, it's mortality from cervical cancer for women uh, after uh, 45. Uh, it's on the downflow in Russia and everywhere else. And on the right-hand side, uh, for younger women. In Europe, in the United States, it's uh, decreasing. And in Russia, it's on the rise. And we, we can see that South Africa is the only country that is ahead of us in this negat negative sense. We can see that in the older age groups, the death rate um, is uh, going down, and with the young women, it rises. We carried out the forecast for some of the cancers, particularly the ones that are a true challenge for the modern society. If we take the cervical cancer, we calculated the growth of um, uh, morbidity uh, uh, up to 2030, and we can see there is almost a double increase. Um, uh, but these calculations were carried out up to 2013. And uh, so this is the calculated forecast. And on the left-hand side, that's actually what happened. That is retrospective. So. Uh, 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 17065, that is the forecast, and we can uh, compare it with the obtained results because already we are in 2018, and the difference is minimal. So the forecast is very precise, but unfortunately, that's what we expect. That's what we expect to happen if we are not going to change anything. Now, as for mortality from cervical cancer, um, it will grow and uh, it will grow by 1.5 times as compared to the 1990s. And as for the tumors associated with the um, uh, papillomavirus, another challenge, uh, these are uh, the uh, tumors of neck and uh, head as well, and we uh, these were forecasts for women. Uh, to, uh, uh, tonsils and uh, uh, pharynx, and you can see the expect growth here is for the forecast for men. There was a certain trend uh, on the down uh, flow for men, obviously associated with other risk factors, and they are diminishing, like uh, smoking and uh, heavy drinking. But we are expecting a growth, and most probably this is associated with the uh, human papillomavirus. Uh, and uh, in order um, uh, for us uh, to have a positive trend, we must focus our attention on smoking, on heavy drinking. And today in our society, um, there is a lot of discussions about the um, of um, um, HPV in the Council. Even in the Council and Federation, we discussed the vaccine, the vaccine to be incorporated in the vaccination calendar for children, uh, not only for girls, but uh, for boys as well at the next stage, which is an absolutely correct approach. Uh, 
So these programs uh, definitely should consider the experience of other countries. Now, when we take screening, and we discuss screening quite a lot, and we're trying to compare screening and dispensarization. Dispensarization is not going to work if the principles of screening are not properly applied. As for vaccination, it's a financial problem. Vaccines are quite expensive for the state. But the experience of the foreign countries demonstrates that the solution is not only with money. Um, so and we, we were able to get money for uh, chemotherapy, but there was not much effect. Here is the experience of Armenia. Starting with December 2017, uh, they have been using the four uh, uh, valent va vaccine for the prevention for girls. Um, um, 13-year-old girls, and uh, they were vaccinated at school um, uh, with vaccination after six months. And here is what we have after 18 months, the coverage. The coverage is just 4% on the whole, from 2 to 9%. Uh, so the program should be an, um, um, a very extensive program. We must... Um, um, raise the awareness level with the population. So any program, preventive program, uh, primary prevention, um, screening, all these should be carried out on the basis of the experience obtained by other countries.